Well, it looks like most everybody's here, so why don't we get started? Um, I am Claire, and I'm with Pet Hour Society, so welcome. I see some new faces here. This is our third monthly group here at Jack's of the Pet Parents Group. And what we do is I just have speakers come every month that uh, talk about topics relevant to pet owners to help their pets live happier, healthier, longer lives. And so tonight we're talking about grooming, which will be a lot of fun. And this is Bear, <laughs> the star of the show. Um, so that's our pet parents group. And it's the third Thursday of every month at 6 o'clock right here in the conference room at Jack's. And I gave you sheets that talk about the upcoming events. And you can go onto my website and sign up for the events through there, which most of you did tonight. If you did not, I'm going to pass around the sheet for you to put your name and email address so that we can let you know about further upcoming events. And if you just want to start with that and pass it around, that would be great. So next month's event is going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to have a guest speaker. I'm actually going to be the speaker. And we are going to do a holiday pet memorial service to help honor the babies that we've loved and lost throughout our pet ownership lives. And that's something that not a lot of people do. CSU does an annual pet memorial service every year in September for National Pet Memorial Day. And I want to start doing it around the holidays just so that pet loss is recognized as a real loss, just as devastating as a human loss would be. Um, and a lot of people don't recognize it as that. I'm trying to bring awareness to that. And so I do want to have a candlelight memorial service. We'll get a little LED candle. And there will be other people here that um, are encountering the same losses that you've experienced. So we are just like, we'll be like a little family here and bond together on the holidays and celebrate our babies. So I hope anyone who is interested can make it or share that information with other people um, that may be interested in joining us. And that'll be next month on December 20th. So kind of coming around, the reason I formed Cat Honor Society is I lost a Cocker Spaniel years ago and I didn't really have any support. I had just moved to Colorado, and um, I didn't really know what my options were after that. And so I have two 14-year-old dogs at home now, and I'm kind of facing that again times two. So I started looking into things to prepare myself. And what I ended up doing was becoming certified in pet loss and grief companioning. And I help Thanks. people with senior pets or elderly pets through their pets' end-of-life journeys and assist with that process of educating the owners. I believe that knowledge is power. And so the more that you know about your options in advance, the better decisions you can make for your little kiddos as they're in their journey's end. And um, I support you during that. I offer grief support, do private memorial services. I have a bunch of memorial keepsakes and pet lover items throughout the room. Everything you see here tonight is for sale if you have some holiday shopping you want to do after we're done. Thank you. And um, there are some custom order items that if you're interested in, you can still place an order for those, although we're getting down to the wire for custom stuff. So feel free after we're done to just walk and look around at all the items. Um, I want to thank Liana from Wet Noses Pet Sitting. She is here. We're on Facebook Live tonight. So for those who couldn't make it, they, uh, this will be on Wet Nose Pet Sitting's Facebook page. I'll put it on my page. If you want to put it on your page, we can share mm -hmm. also. If you don't want to be on camera, Wags is also filming. <laughs> You're not live though, right? Correct. Okay. So one live, one not. This will be captured forever. Um, <laughs> I want to thank Alex from Jack's Outdoor Gear. They provide these, this space for us on a monthly basis to do our events. And they provide the coffee and the water. and all the seating and everything here. So I would like to invite Alex to come up and just tell you a little bit about Jax. Hey guys, welcome to Jax. Uh, first thing I wanted to say is thank you to Claire and the folks from Wags. We're really excited to be able to offer these programs and give you good education every month. Uh, definitely come back. We love it, love it, love it. It's always a good time. A um, little bit about Jax, if you've not been in this store, um, it's kind of a hodgepodge of everything, if you've noticed. Take some time, walk around. Um, but I also just wanted to let you know that we do offer like all of the good pet supplies that you might need at our other location as well. And that is right down 287. Like you're going towards the hills. Uh, you can't miss it. 
the big dinosaur and the big sign, so we'd be happy to see you in there. All of our stores are pet friendly, so bring your friends with you. It can be your dog, your cat, your pig, your donkey, whatever you'd like, so we hope to see you there. Thanks, guys. Okay, um, one last thing I forgot to mention about the memorial service. If you do plan on coming, please bring photos of your pets, their favorite toys, their leashes, collars, their urn with their ashes in it or whatever. We'll display it around the room, and that's one of the ways that we will be honoring their pets next month. So, um, But today is a fun night, and we are talking about a groomed dog is a happy dog. And this is Sherry and Amber from WAG's Pet Market and Grooming. If you have not been to WAGS, they are in Old Town, Fort Collins, and they have the cutest little store there. And they have also recently started doing mobile grooming, so if you have dogs like mine who does not play well with others, they come to your house and groom right in the street in their mobile van, which has a generator and, and everything right in the van that they need. So, um, I will be sharing, I'm passing around a sign-up sheet, uh, so if you did not register on Eventbrite through my website, Go ahead and put your name and email address on the sign-up sheet. I will be sharing that with Jax and Wags tonight so that we all know who is here. Can thank you for coming. And um, please, as you're doing your shopping, to thank Jax for hosting us. Please remember to come and shop here. So I will hand the rest of the evening over to Sherry and Amber and Bear. And we will learn some great stuff about grooming. So first I just want to let you know that we're going to do a door prize. Um, it's for $20 off of grooming and you can just, there's some light sheets over there. You can throw your name in the card and then we'll draw it at the end of the night and uh, give that to someone. Um, and so we'll just have a thank you gift for coming. Um, so we were excited to have this opportunity to talk about grooming because we found that um, a lot of people, there's just some things they are not aware of, and how would you be if, if you haven't had dogs for a long time, if you're new to having a dog, or if you're new to the breed that you have. You may have always had labs, but then you get a palm, and it's a different story. So, um, so we're happy to give you some tips and talk about why grooming is important for dogs, some of the things that we see, uh, some of the challenges that could be caused, and then some things that you can do at home to either groom your dog or help your dog have a better grooming experience when they go to the groomer. Um, so we're gonna start with um, why grooming is, is a happy dog. And it just helps the dog not only look good, but it really helps them be, kind of feel their best. Um, and there's a couple of reasons. It helps them be more healthy. Um, in ways of just how they're, um, how they can move, how they can, um, what we'll, identifying some things we'll talk about. Um, we'll talk about the importance of nail trimming and not, and not having them matted and that sort of thing. So there's definitely some health benefits. They have more energy, and Amber can probably tell you some stories about that. Energy is a fun one, because I take a lot of before and after pictures, and in before pictures, they'll kind of be like hunched over, and um, just like kind of almost lethargic sometimes, not every dog, um, but some of them are. And they're just, they don't seem like they have as much energy and then after their haircut, they're bouncing around and they're standing up straight and they're happy. Um, and I think it's just the same thing too with people. They know they feel better, they know they look good, they know they're gonna get more attention because they look good, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, it definitely makes a difference. And then also, as and the posture, posture too. Yeah, the the posture. It really the before and after pictures are amazing. I post a lot on Instagram um, at Wags Grooming, and if you look at the before and afters, it's just amazing the difference between like their posture from the before and the posture after. It just speaks for itself. Definitely. So here's a couple before and afters. Oh. Um, just like oh. Like their heads they put their higher. tails up. Yeah, yeah, they definitely. Here's another one. Um, scary little dog. And, and then they're just, you know, and they'll stand and they'll pose for mm -hmm. you. And yeah, just it, you really can't <laughs> see the difference um, when they're done. Um, and they just they feel better. Mm -hmm. And some some of them are, you know, like Bear is kind of like a very proud. <laughs> when he's dressed, he's he's very proud. Yes. And some dogs I think are like that, where they're proud <laughs> and happy to be yeah. dog groomed. <laughs> So how do we keep them healthy? So one of the ways we keep them healthy is finding things that, that owners just might miss. Um, so I'm gonna give you a list and then we're gonna talk about some more of these in depth. So mats is, is a big thing. Um, 
bumps and lumps. So this is actually a picture um, of my cat that I had. Um, she passed away last year. But this bump that just started growing and I, and I found it um, because I had to, she was so old she couldn't groom herself anymore and I had to have her shaved. And that's how we found it was when we were starting to, to go through her fur. Um, so things like that, sores, ticks and insects, in, uh, infections in the ears, um, bites, wounds, and sensitivities. And so Bear is a, one of our examples <laughs> of a, a bite discovered. Yes, so Bear is my own personal dog, and we have four dogs, and he actually got bit by one of our other ones while we weren't home on his little head up here. And I did not know until I gave him a bath. <laughs> And he's my own, it, it had only happened, I think, maybe the day prior, because it was still very fresh when I found it. But the blow dryer just kind of parts their hair and we can see every inch of their body. So you notice even the tiniest little things that you might not have noticed with all this hair. <laughs> yeah, I think um, also like with ticks, we had um, mm -hmm. one day we had a dog come in and I think uh, about 30 ticks <gasps> from the dog and they knew it like they knew they had been out in the woods mm -hmm. um and i think it was anna that did yeah. that dog and um mm. she kind of put them in a jar and kept them but yeah she just scoured through and well it's helpful too because them. the blow dryer you can i had a dog with ticks come in and i actually used the blow dryer and counted them so that i would know how many i was looking for as i was taking them off and i found everyone with the blow and if you would have searched by hand it would have taken a much longer amount of time to find them all. Yeah. <laughs> and Lyme's disease is, is getting more and more prevalent. I understand they found it here in Colorado. Um, I'm actually originally from the East Coast and it's huge there, but um, it's definitely something to be concerned about and to, to keep an eye on. So Amber's gonna tell you about Ruby. So Ruby, she was one of my sweet little babies, one of the first requests that I ever had um, and I groomed her about every four weeks regularly, and I knew her very well. I knew that she didn't have any lumps on her. I knew she never had anything wrong, and she came in one appointment, and she had a lump near her tail, and it was pretty hard, um, and being that she was a golden retriever, I definitely told her mom, you need to take her in as soon as you can. Um, just because of the, the high cancer rates with that. And she did, and it ended up being a very aggressive form of cancer. It had formed in less than four weeks. And they got it removed, and she has been four years cancer-free now. And they have, they've been so loyal, they love me, um, and they thank me all the time for it still, even after four years. And I love her so much. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, it's just something that you just might miss. It's not that you don't know your dog, but the groomers are going through every inch of their body, pretty much. So it's easier for the groomers to see things, to feel things. They also are so used to feeling the body in such a way that they're gonna notice a bump, even if you can't see it. Sometimes it just kind of forms under the skin, mm -hmm. and you can't really see it, but they know what they feel, especially if you have the same groomer grooming your dog for a lifetime that it's definitely something that is uh, easier for the groomer probably to find. Um, so some other ways we keep them healthy um, is their ears, just keeping their ears clean. Uh, we had a client on mobile grooming who, it was our first time grooming her dog and her dog was elderly. And um, she's, we knew the dog was gonna be a challenge. Um, and she said she doesn't like her ears to be touched. So if you can't trim around her ears, I understand she really doesn't like it. And when we got her in the van and we were just kind of looking at her, we lifted up her ears and they were so infected. <gasps> and it's why, and the owner just didn't know. And so we did tell her, you need to take your dog to the vet. And, you know, just I, sometimes people just don't know what they're looking for. And we knew instantly looking at that, that that was an infection. And I think it's just something you get used to understanding a little more of what you're seeing. So it just definitely helps to have another pair of eyes. Um, you know, and, and you're not gonna, you know, if there's nothing wrong with your dog, you're probably not taking it in to the vet unless you're getting shots, and some rabies shots are like three years, so, you know, so it just is an extra set of eyes on your dog. And then the nails. Um, the nail, the, having your nails too long can impact their posture. Um, it can, you know, start having joint problems, that sort of thing. 
Um, so Amber's going to talk a little more about that. And, and this picture we just felt can really show you how the nails are starting to curl and they're impacting the, how that dog is standing and their posture. Yeah, so with nails, um, a lot of people think, oh, if they're long, it's not that big of a deal, they'll be fine. But it really, it's amazing how you can see how they do start <coughs> to affect how they hold their foot and how they walk. Um, and that will lead to arthritis, it'll lead to inflammation. Um, a lot of dogs lick their feet more when their nails are long just because it's uncomfortable. And even if they're not that long, longer nails can still be uncomfortable to the point where they're licking. Um, I've had a lot of people where they say the dogs just constantly lick the feet and then we trim the nails and they don't anymore. Um, yeah, and I think they're also more susceptible to um, catching. So mm -hmm. I've known a couple dogs that were playing and their nail caught something and ripped it down below the quick, which is just really painful for them. Um, and at that point, there have been a couple cases where the nail's like, hey, you just have to cut it off, and it's just painful for whoever has to do that um, as well. So it's just, it's a safety thing, it's a health thing, so um, it's really important to keep the nails short. And if the nails are long, if you, if you trim them regularly, the quick very well may retract a little bit if they have really long quicks. Um, so it's just important to kind of keep that up for them. So dental hygiene is important as well. Um, dogs could use a good tooth brushing and there are definitely <laughs> different products. If you can't brush their teeth, there are gels that you can use, um, but it's gonna help avoid bad breath. Um, it's gonna keep the gums healthy and the teeth clean. And a lot of things now, a lot of products they make now too, I would look for something that says it has enzymes in it because then even if you have a dog that's not gonna let you get all those teeth brushed, as most dogs will not, um, then the enzymes get in their mouth and they kind of, the saliva distributes it and the enzymes will actually break down a lot of the plaque. Brushing. And you don't want to use human toothpaste. You definitely <laughs> want to get dog toothpaste. Don't try to use your own toothpaste. Um, there could very well be things in there that's really good for your dog. So there are special toothpaste to, to do that. And so groomers will just brush the teeth. We don't actually do the teeth cleaning. So if your dog has no dental issues, you have to go to the vet but we can help keep your, the teeth brush or it's something you can do at home if you're a um, Oh, and it avoids long-term. So I don't, I don't think um, people, some people realize that a lot of dogs' problems, they have heart problems, it all comes from our teeth, right? Our teeth can get so much bacteria. Um, if you're a heart patient, going to the dentist is kind of a big deal. Um, there are a lot of people who have um, different issues. If you're a heart patient, I think most of the people will have to take um, an antibiotic or something before they go to the dentist. So they're, they're actually related as oddly as that is. Um, so it helps with dogs as well. If they have bad teeth, it can cause other internal organ problems. So safely removing mats and tangles. Um, mats and tangles, they can constrict the flow of blood. They cause bruising. Uh, they can cause hot spots, hematomas. Um, and they can hide any kind of infection, irritation that you just can't see. Um, even with the dryer at that point, um, you're not gonna see it until you get rid of the mats. So here's a severe case, obviously. Um, and we just wanted to show you this to, so you can really see the, the extremity of what it will do. Um, so when we shaved this dog, it almost came in one piece like a pelt. So you can imagine it's like a dog had a blanket glued to its body. And then, um, Amber, did you want to speak to like, the bruising? Yeah, so the bruising, since this was obviously a really extreme case, um, not every dog is going to have this noticeable of a problem, but a lot of times we do have dogs come in who, especially in like their sanitary areas like that, have matting, and the hair just pulls at it just right when they walk, that it'll cause these not that big, that, that's just because he was really bad, but it'll cause these little red dots and they're tiny and you, you wouldn't even notice them if you, you know, weren't like scouring them. But it is, it is a little type of bruising just from that hair constantly like pulling. Yeah, and it's, it's just like if you, you know, had your hair mm -hmm. matted and pulled and <laughs> there's just no airflow. So we actually have in our salon, we have a display of mats that um, one of them actually looks like we cut the tail off, but it's just the whole tail, the, not the tail didn't come off, but the fur came off. Mm -hmm. um, and on this dog, um, 
This actually happened twice. And um, it, uh, yeah, it's, uh, we tried to work on that. Um, but underneath, his tail was swollen and you couldn't tell. Um, and about this much of it was swollen and there was a sore. And so we said, you, you need to take this. And we, we did offer to take the dog. Um, but it, you know, it does happen. So you just can't see what's underneath the mats. Um, and hi, hi. Come on in. thank you. Um, you can't see what's underneath the mats, and it's just really important to make sure your dog's getting brushed out, which we're going to talk a little bit about and show you a little bit about brushing. Um, and part, some of the areas I think are like the ears, mm -hmm. under the arms, just the areas of like high friction that are constantly moving, and then people pet behind the ears a lot, so we tend to see a lot of mats behind the ears. And you know it's out of love most of the time when dogs come in and there are some that they don't have any on their whole body, but they'll just have two little ones behind their ears and they're, they're, th those ones aren't as serious. Um, but when they're left to, to get worse, then that's when they become patient. Yeah, and sometimes people uh, will bring in, not this severe, but they'll bring in a matted dog and they want it brushed out. They don't want it shaved. And the challenge with that is that the dog, A, is going to have to stand for a really long time for that. That can take hours. Um, they can get brush burn from it. Um, and even in the grooming process, if you think about it, dogs don't stand still for hours, right? In the day, they're sitting, they're moving, and it's just like if you have a job where you have to stand all day, it's tiring. So it gets tiring for them. So if you, if you have to make them stand for a couple extra hours brushing them out, um, it just causes more problems, so it's, it's more peaceful for them to do that. So that's why, I mean, this dog obviously had to be shaved, but a lot of times when you could maybe brush it out, it's still probably better for the dog mm -hmm. to give them a short haircut and just start fresh. And I know some people... It also will damage the hair, too. Um, if you brush out, if, if there's a few here and there, we usually will do it if the dog tolerates it. Um, but if you're doing a lot of dematting, um, just like with our hair, it rips the ends of those follicles off, and then they actually end up just getting tangly more quickly the next time, just because that hair is so damaged that it just twists back up a lot faster. And this is definitely one of the things where we feel like, um, why would you know? You know, like why would you know the difference in the hair and that sort of thing? And just something to make you aware of. And most dogs won't look like this. It was just an easy example to make it extreme. But when your dog does have a little part that's that's matted somewhere, just know it's, it's pulling on them. And it's, you know, it could be hurting them and there could be something going on underneath that we need to watch for. So what can you do um, to help keep them, them healthy? So one is just, you know, maintenance of the nails, like regular tr nail trims. Um, depending on the dog, but mm -hmm. like every three, four weeks? I would say, yeah. Um, if you're trying to get the nails shorter, we recommend dremeling them every, sometimes even as often as every one to two weeks, just until you get them pushed back to the length that you want them to be, because every time we can kind of get them a little bit shorter. Um, but once they're maintained and they're at a length you like, I would say, depending on the dog's activity level, every four to six weeks is probably probably a good good estimate yeah and we do offer um, nail trims and dremeling and the difference with the dremel is you do get a cleaner finish they're a little rounder so they don't catch and you can get them shorter mm -hmm. so that definitely is a little bit better um paying attention to their behavior like amber was saying about them you know with their licking their paws a lot or scratching a lot is definitely something that's going to give you a sign that something may be wrong um, if you have any other and stories you, that. if they ever do develop a, a mat in a spot that you've never noticed before, I've seen dogs where they had something mm -hmm. wrong with their foot or with around their tail, and they would have a mat there, and they never did before, and it was just because they were chewing at that spot, trying to trying to make it feel better. So if you have a dog and mm -hmm. they develop something weird with their fur where they haven't had it before, it might be an issue that they're trying to tell you. Um, and then you can brush them. So we're going to talk a little bit about brushing and different breeds have different kinds of hair. There's actually hair and fur. So hair continues to grow and you have to cut it and fur has a, a DNA of this is how long it will get, like a lab, right? Um, so you do have different breeds that are going to require different tools and that sort of thing. So we're going to talk a little bit about tools. 
Um, so this is the Zoom room. So dude, this one's a little worn down. They, they, <laughs> oh my they start out like more pointy, but it's just like a rubber brush. And these work really well for short haired dogs. So boxers, labs, um, anything with that short, slick hair. It doesn't seem like it would do much, but this is a magical, magical tool. <laughs> it, it might do a little bit on him, but it pretty much just gets out like that dead top coat. So where the Furminator is going to get out undercoat um, and it won't really pull out the top coat, this is going to get the top coat that's dead. It won't pull out live top coat, um, but it will pull out all the dead top coat and that's something that another brush isn't really going to get out. And they, yeah, this is, this is my favorite. People look at me like I'm crazy when I recommend this, but it really does work for short-haired dogs. Yeah, especially just the slick fur. I have, I have one of those, and it's amazing how much fur you can just mm -hmm. brush out of that, um, <laughs> that coat. And that's what's shedding and getting all over your fur, furniture or your clothes, right? So when you have a short-haired dog, this is your best friend because it's just going to kind of keep that. If you just do a little bit every day or every couple days, it's going to help with the shedding and keeping that where you want it instead of all over <laughs> everything. Um, so the slicker brush. So slicker brushes are going to be good for dogs with hair like he has. Um, anything that's a little bit longer, Aussies, um, also longer haired dogs like Shih Tzus or Havanese, Poodles, this this will be good. Um, I use a variety of brushes. I don't use any one brush on any one dog just because they all have different purposes. They all get different amounts of hair out. But this is kind of like the basic um, for any dog that has longer hair, this is like a good basic tool. Wait a minute, it says short up there. Did you mean long or why did it? It's a short single coat. Is that considered a short? <laughs> no, no. So, so a shorter single coat could be like, you could use this on a lab like a um, or a golden where it's not as it's not almost kind of like his back. Okay. Because his back's a little bit shorter, not necessarily this this fluff. What's a single coat? So a single coat would be a short single coat would be more so a Shih Tzu that has been shaved down, and they have a shorter single coat. But what does single mean? Uh, that they don't have an undercoat. Oh, thank yeah. you. <laughs> like, like if you think of the obvious, like a Samoyed, a Husky kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, they have an undercoat, and that's um, like a softer, like mm -hmm. um, really Denser. insulator. Yeah, it's very mm -hmm. dense. And then the fur that you're like actually seeing that's fluff is the overcoat. So that's um, that's a top coat. And so there is a difference in the kind of fur and that sort of thing. And one thing that people don't realize is double coated dogs are very well insulated, and the insulation is not only for the winter but also for the summer. So you really should never shave a double-coated dog because you're taking away its insulation. It's going to be colder in the winter and hotter in the summer. It, I mean, it seems counterintuitive, <laughs> but it's true. If you shave a husky or a sapodar mm -hmm. or something like that, it's actually taking away their ability to insulate their body from the heat as well as from the cold. So we don't ever recommend it. Some people do do it, and sometimes there's health reasons to do it. Um, but we don't recommend it because it's damaging um, just a, a protection that they're born with. You're kind of taking that away from them. But that was a really good question, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so medium and long double coat, that would be more along the lines of his like lower half, and that would probably be more, more of the Aussies and things like that. I, I think I missed it. It said short there, and I was getting yeah. a little ahead of myself. Um, but oh, for, like for those kind of dogs, an undercoat rake works really well to get out that shedding hair. And I always like to start with a slicker brush first and get out the bulk of the hair. Because if you try to go through their coat with an undercoat rake and they have a lot of like impacted hair, it won't really want to go through. It'll kind of just get stuck in all of the hair. Um, so you want to just make sure you get the bulk of it out first and then that, that'll get a lot of the dead under. And when you use that, you kind of want to pull the, the skin a little bit taut and then go down. It's kind of like if you're tweezing your eyebrows, you know, you kind of do it this way and it, and it doesn't pull the skin. 
So it's the same thing with the dog. Mm -hmm. So when you're using that, and then it's more comfortable it, for them. Yeah, too. you're not just kind of pulling their skin. All yeah, because the otherwise you're going to drag their skin <laughs> with it. So just pull the skin taut, and then you can rake it, and then pull it taut, and then you can rake it if you're using a tool like that. Um, so then the medium long single coat, you might need a comb. Mm -hmm. Detangling and yeah, so that's going to be um, you know dogs that are left in their more natural coats. So um, Shih Tzus or Poodles or you know anything that you're leaving it a little more long and you're not doing that short haircut, then you want to use the slicker brush and then um, I like to go through with a comb afterward to kind of just fine tune everything and make sure you get anything that the slicker brush might have missed. Yeah, they're really good to, I've used it to like pick out the tangles a little mm -hmm. bit. If it's just a little tangle, you don't want it to get worse. Sometimes it can be easy mm -hmm. to, you know, just but if the slicker's it missing it, you can just work it out, especially with the fine end of the comb. So those are just some of the basic tools that you can use at home to keep up your dog's coat, whether it's a short hair or long hair, you can identify the tools and, um, and just be able to keep up with it and, and brush them and, you know, take care of whatever needs to keep them dematted. So some other things you can do, uh, shakes and ear rubs. Um, so helping a dog be comfortable when they're going to the groomer or even to the vet. Um, so shakes is really just about having them shake and playing with their paws. Dogs naturally don't like their paws touched. And so the more you can play with them, especially if you get a puppy, do it right away. Um, if you're adopting a dog that's a, an adult, then you want to be cautious about that. But the more you can touch their paws, the easier it will be to trim their nails, to you know, look at injuries, that sort of thing. If something gets caught in their paw, it'll be easier to look at if they're used to having their paws handled. Mm -hmm. And you just want to make it the best possible experience every time you do it. Um, in the beginning, a lot of dogs won't let you, so you'll have to bribe them with some treats and make it very positive with the treats. But then, after they're kind of used to it, I like to do it when they're just kind of laying with me on the couch because it makes them associate their feet being touched with something that they like and they enjoy doing. Um, and then they don't necessarily think every time my feet get touched, I'm gonna get my nails trimmed. They think <laughs> people touch my feet when I'm relaxing on the couch. And then they enjoy it a little bit more. And the same with the ear rubs. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. It's because we are, you know, especially if, you're, if it's a dog, you're trimming the ears, we clean the ears. Um, you know, helping them get used to just being handled mm -hmm. is always good. Um, you know, even for the, for the vet, it's good to like be able to get to their whole body. You know, give them little massages and get used to um, being handled because it does make it easier when they're at the groomer or the vet or, you know, that sort of thing to just allow them to be handled. So be brave when dropping them off. Yes, yes, yes. It's very, re very relatable to that. Um, so I tell people all the time, they, they feel your energy. So if you drop them off and you're very afraid and you're telling them that they're going to be okay, they, they feel that and they kind of feed off of that because they don't really know a lot of the time exactly what's happening. They just go based off of your emotions. Um, and if you're scared, then they're scared. And if you're fine and you just tell them to go on back, then most of the time they just they just go on back. And they the more times that they get used to that, the more they just kind of realize that that's, that's what's happening and that it's okay and nothing bad is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, dogs are just very energetic creatures. And mm -hmm. so they um, sense energy. And, um, and it works also with the groomer. If the groomer is having a bad day and it's full of anxiety or something, that's gonna come out in the dog. And um, they, you know, they'll, they'll do a little dance on the table or they'll be a little more wiggly. And um, one of the things that I loved about working with dogs um, was that mirror. My dog is my mirror. So if I'm you know, amped up or whatever, my dog tells me and then I can remember to just, you know, just calm down and then she'll calm down with me. So, so just try to be calm when you're dropping him off and don't make it a, a, a big deal. Just pretend like this is just what's supposed to happen and, and they'll have an easier time with it. Why is grooming like going to the dentist? <laughs> <laughs> so I also tell people um, when they're very nervous about leaving them, because I, I, don't, I don't want anybody to be nervous when they leave their dog with me. Um, and I feel like it's very relatable to when we go to the dentist. 
nobody wants to really go to the dentist. Um, you have a lot of anxiety about going to the dentist. And then after you're done, you feel very good. And you are much happier and your teeth feel good and your mouth feels good. And it's the same thing. When dogs come in, sometimes they're a little nervous when they get there. And then by the end of it, they are prancing around and they're happy and they're taking treats. And there are a lot of dogs who won't take treats when they first get there, but when they're done, they are all for the treat, all for the treats. And that's kind of a gauge of how a dog is feeling. Because if they won't take a treat, then they're pretty stressed out. But by the end of it, I would say 95% of dogs will take a treat once they're done. <laughs> Don't look. So we have a big window, um, so people can see in the green the grooming, and we do have curtains because there are times we have to close them. Um, but most dogs are going to be more wiggly and anxious if they see you while they are with this other person in this other room. <laughs> but people like to drop them off and peek, you know, and it actually makes it harder for the dog. So we do have curtains. Where there are some dogs that you just have to. Kind of yeah, close. there are some dogs that just get so excited by seeing anyone walk past um, <laughs> because they just want to be friends with everyone that they just get too excited and sometimes we have to close the curtains. But we do also have a little sign up that says we don't mind if people admire them, just if they seem nervous or anxious to please, you know, walk away from the window just because we don't want to stress them out more than they already are stressed out. Brush, brush, brush. <laughs> so as we talked about, um, brushing in between grooms will make the dog's experience better when they get at the, to the groomer because then they don't have mats and tangles and everything and the groom will go much faster. Anything else you want to add to that? The more often you do anything, the more they start to just kind of look at it as a daily life activity and not a, an isolated incident that they're scared of and they just get used to things the more the more you do anything. <laughs> Which is the repetition. So just the repetition of what you do at home, if your dog does go to a groomer, then just do it more than once a year. Um, not all dogs need to go to the groomer every month or even every no. couple months. There are definitely <laughs> dogs that you know get the once or twice a year bath or whatever, but they do need their nails done regularly. Um, but the more often, if it's a dog that needs a haircut, when they're younger especially, the more often you can get them in there, um, the quicker they'll get used to it and be relaxed. And you know, if you have a dog that, that gets groomed, you, you know, you know it's, just, it's a process. And so just like anything else, the repetition, the consistency is going to help them be a lot more comfortable. Um, so finding a groomer that cares. Um, you will see Amber sometimes in the back <laughs> with me holding, and somebody's holding dogs. Like we do what we have I to do. I get in the tub. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there, there are some dogs I've gotten in the tub with. <laughs> yeah. So finding a good groomer is, you know, number one, a groomer that cares, a groomer that puts your dog's safety and your dog's happiness um, first. There have been dogs that have been so upset and have resisted so much that we've told their, their parent that we can't finish the groom just because we're, they're gonna hurt themselves. You know, they're fighting us so much and there's only so much we can do to restrain them without hurting them. And it's rare that that ever happens, but there has been the occasion where we've had a new dog, um, probably more on the van, I think mm -hmm. even, um, than in the salon, just because you're kind of out there alone on the van. But, um, but it, it can happen and it just, um, we have to take the time to let them relax and get to know them, get to know them. So we try to schedule our grooms um, for when we can do them. So if your dog, if you're dropping off your dog at eight in the morning and we're not grooming them till one p.m., he's been sitting in a kennel having anxiety all that time. Mm -hmm. So we don't like to do that to them. We like to try to get them on the table as quickly as possible. Um, so we do schedule, um, you know, close to to our appointment time is is when we think we can get them on the table. Um, there are occasions if we're running really late, sometimes we'll give you a call and just let you know in case you want to drop them off later. Um, we do have a playpen in our room, so <laughs> some dogs we can keep in there so they're not in a kennel. Um, but just having a groomer that cares about these things, that cares that your dog's having a good experience and not just getting a good haircut. 
Um, do you want to talk about interacting and, and I think the next one is <laughs> listening. So yeah. Yeah, so I, I have worked with a lot of different groomers. Um, I've been doing this since I was 15. And I've met a lot of people who really loved it and really were doing it for the right reasons. And then I've met people who, who just kind of fell into it and it, it worked for them. So they, they kept doing it. And I would say that somebody who is going to really care is going to be interested in everything you have to say. They're not going to try to be rushing you to get you out of there. They're going to listen to you. They're going to want to try to find out exactly what you want so that they can make you happy. Um, and so they can do the best haircut for your dog. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I always say about Amber, she's probably sitting here now, but, um, <laughs> when people come to pick up their dogs from Amber and they're all excited, Amber is giggling and just as excited. Like she just takes so much pride in her work. Um, and that's what you want to see. You want your groomer to be excited with you about your dog's haircut. Um, and also the listening is important. It's, you know, the groomer's trying to translate um, what you want into your grooming terms, right, and, and what length you want. And they don't always get it right the first time. They think they hear you. Sometimes you'll say um, something like, don't, you know, I want it shorter but not too short, and then you see it as too long because they erred on that side. Mm -hmm. So just know one of the important things about having a groomer that you can trust is then they listen and find out what you're not, you know, what you want next time, and so they can make notes and adjust it next time. It's just kind of like a good doctor, too. If you go to a doctor and they explain everything in their medical terms to you, you probably wouldn't want to go to that doctor again because um, a good doctor is going to try to help you understand their terminology because your terminology for grooming is probably very different for some of the terms that we use um, amongst ourselves. So it's just kind of bridging that gap and trying to get that perfect, perfect haircut. <laughs> Um, and then they have the right tools, and here's one of our tools, the Happy Hoodie. <laughs> it makes for great photos, <laughs> but it also really does help with the dryer. Um, so we put them on almost every dog we dry. There are a few dogs that just don't like having something on their head, and they'll just try to scratch it off. But I would say most dogs are completely fine with it, and it just muffles that dryer noise so that they're not having to listen to that and it's a scary sound, it's loud, it's, it's probably louder than a vacuum, and most dogs don't like vacuums. So it just, it really, really helps. There have been dogs where we were unable to dry them and then we got the happy hoodies and now they are perfectly fine and it's just the noise that bothers them. So just having the tools, we also use the essential oils. Um, sometimes we'll have lavender in there mm -hmm. to just help, it'll calm them down. You can actually put it in their ear a little bit just like on the skin mm -hmm. and um, just finding ways to make it more enjoyable for mm -hmm. the for the dog um, and they take care of themselves too yes so if if someone really cares about the job they want to do it for a long time I want to groom forever um, I love it I can't imagine doing anything else so I take care of myself to make sure that I can do it as long as I possibly can um, I wear headphones, I wear a mask, which makes me look kind of scary when people walk past the window. Um, but I don't want to breathe in all of that hair because then I'm not going to be able to, to groom for as long as I could if I'm not breathing in all that hair. <laughs> so it's just important to have all the right tools. Um, requesting the same groomer, so kind of what we talked about a little bit um, is just the familiarity. Um, so this is a dog that you can see with Anna, um, is very comfortable with her, right? And so it, it definitely helps to have your dog like your groomer. And even though the groomers are brushing them and, and scary, you know, they're scared of the nails and stuff, in the end, a lot of times you'll see they, they love their groomers. Like there's a connection there. After they've been they know for it's a while. not all bad. I yeah. baby talk dogs all day. <laughs> That's all I do. And they, even though they don't necessarily like what they're doing, what you're doing, they know that they're in good hands. And seeing the same face, I feel like helps them not be as nervous because you're not seeing just like with anything, like that the doctor dentist hair appointments. You wouldn't really want to see a different person every single time you went in. Um, and it just makes them feel a little bit better to see a familiar face. Yeah. Um, the, and the groomers can learn, like we said, they'll 
take notes from the, your groom and find out what you want done differently next mm -hmm. time. And the groomer will then eventually be able to, you know, at the second or third groom, then you'll have exactly what you want. Some people do different haircuts winter and summer. And so the groomers can put those notes. And so sometimes we have notes of this is the winter groom and this is the summer groom. And then if for some reason, you know, your groomer isn't available, um, when Amber had Nyla, you know, some people waited for her and some people couldn't. And so you have another groomer and if she's got notes in there, then, then the other groomer can at least follow And that. it's easier to fine tune things over time if you're with the same person because then we know, well, I remember haircuts like I don't remember other things in my life, but I can, <laughs> I can remember dogs' haircuts, that, and I don't even have to look in the computer, and I can know exactly what length guard combs I do on them, on their face, on their body, because some dogs get different lengths on different parts of their body. Um, and then you're able to fine tune it just because, like with the guard combs, there are different numbers, and they go up by little increments, and if I use, say, one of them is a number one comb, and you're like, oh, that face was just a little bit too short, then I know I can just go up one more, and it's not like starting over every single time trying to pick those, those lengths that you want. And then you just get a better haircut, just be, for the, mm -hmm. all those reasons that over time, you know, the groomer really, they know your dog, and, and sometimes it's hard to give a good haircut if the dog is super scared and wiggly, and moving, it's hard to get that completely finished look when the dog won't sit still. But you don't want to force it, you know, you want it to be a good experience. So a lot of times in the beginning, you know, their haircut may not be as finished, um, but then over time they get more comfortable, they sit still longer, and then you can have a very finished look. Um, so we're going to take questions, but for more information, we created this puppy book um, and it's downloadable on our website, and it talks about everything from nutrition, dental, accessories. There's an article from Amber Kwan who does uh, dog training. And it was just things having the shop and the grooming we found. There were little things that people asked or didn't know. They got a new puppy for the first time. And so it's some, some basic stuff and then some things like we've talked about today that some people might not know. So you're free to download that from our website. Um, but does anybody have any questions, anything we didn't cover that you were hoping we would cover? Mm -hmm. um, but anything, yeah. I have a question about the nail trimming because my dogs walk on the pavement maybe two miles a day, and I don't feel like they need nail trimming <laughs> on a regular maybe basis not. if mm -hmm. at all, but should I, I mean, should they or is that I enough? would say a lot of dogs who walk that often might not need it. Um, you could always stop by and have a groomer look at it and they'll be able to tell you if they need it or not. Um, but yeah, I've had people come in before and ask and they don't need it. And okay. yeah, yeah, walking on pavement does wonders. <laughs> okay, good, thanks. <laughs> Sorry, another question. Well, I was wondering, I, I, I thought that actually you guys were going to talk more about actually doing um, more grooming on your dogs like yourself um, with like a group, you know, like a shaving tool or something. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm wondering if you would talk any about doing that, especially like um, in between professional grooms or mm -hmm. something, if you want to do touch ups on your dogs. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you have any specific? Well, I, I never really know if I'm going the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> so I generally say go with the grain of the hair. Okay. Um, typically, there are some cases when you're, you want to go opposite, but most of the time going with the grain of the hair is the correct way to go. Um, as far as clippers go, I would say it's kind of you get what you pay for sort of, sort of thing. Um, a lot of people try to buy the cheaper ones from like PetSmart where they're like $40, and those ones, the blades on them just aren't very good. They don't want to go through the hair very well. So it's an investment a lot of times, but it's worth it to, to get the more expensive equipment. When I've tried to do it before, what I've run into is like it'll start really good, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's just that they get clogged up with hair so quickly that yeah that then I feel like it's not as good as it did when I first did the first runs through with mm -hmm. it. Is that kind of what you think you have to clean it, it out all the time? It could be too. I I don't very often. Um, does it have like the detachable blades? Yeah, your blades could need to be sharpened. Um, we sharpen ours every couple months, and we're doing a lot of dogs, so you wouldn't need to sharpen yeah. them that often. I would say maybe once a year. Um, they're also, in most clippers, there's a thing called a blade drive, and that can start to get old. Um, 
and I replace mine once a month, but I'm doing a lot of do I'm doing a lot of dogs. But that might also be something because when that starts to get old, it doesn't want to go through the hair as easily. So. And the other thing I think is you, you need the hair brushed out. So that's a great time to have a comb. Mm -hmm. So I would use the slicker or whatever brush. And then if it's a longer haired dog that's getting a haircut, then I would just comb it and make sure that comb can go through because the clippers can get caught on like a tangle or something. Mm -hmm. So I would make sure completely comb them out just to make sure it'll be a little smoother ride because that could be tripping it up mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And, and part of the reason we didn't get that detailed is just because there's so much to know about that <laughs> that we don't want somebody going over the path information. If you've been doing it, you have right. some experience. Um, it, you know, it's something you can just play with and, and try. And um, you know, I would just start with a longer cut and so it's not too short and see how it goes. But definitely brush them out, comb them out, make sure there's no tangles before you do that. And with a dog that has two golden doodles, um, mm -hmm. instead of just brushing them like along the, the grain, I want to say, of their hair, <laughs> you know, should I brush them so that they're fluffed up more? Would that work better with the So first? when I, I will do my first pass for the haircut with the hair how it is, and then to get a smoother finish, I will brush up, and then I go back over it after okay. I brush it up, yes. Yeah. I think it looks okay, and then later on, I was like, oh, it's just so choppy. <laughs> yeah, and brushing back habit. up will help. It'll help a lot. It okay. gets those little hairs that just don't get get in the, the path of the clippers. Yeah. And I think making sure he's clean. Like, you know, if you're making sure yeah. you're getting, he's getting a bath and yeah, clean, clean then is easier, and if they're blow dry, is easier. Um, they, they do have some blow dryers that aren't necessarily salon quality, but they're like kind of an in between your normal hair dryer and a, a salon hair dryer, and I would look up those because they really straighten out that hair and it helps you get a better cut. Yeah, yeah. it makes it easier sense. to brush them too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other? Yeah. We have a beach love. Mm -hmm. Is it normal that they are shedding all yes. the time? Because <laughs> <laughs> when we bought her, mm -hmm. we were told, oh, they don't shed. Oh, oh, <laughs> and they're fine. Yeah, <laughs> yes, they do, and this is, this is going to be your best friend. This okay. will, this is going to do better than anything else will do. And you have to put a little bit of pressure when you do it on dogs with really short hair, but it, it'll pull out a lot of hair and it'll be helpful. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. It's, amazing. It is amazing. it's almost, I think, because it's rubber. Like mm -hmm. if you've ever used one of the rubber things to clean off the fur off of your couch, mm -hmm. it's kind of like that it catches it because of the rubber. And so it doesn't need to have the, the bristles like the other brush. It just is sticking to that slick fur, and, and it, you'll get it out in little piles. It's, yeah, and I can just come to your store and get it. We do, yes, have, we do yeah. have them. Uh, yeah, it's astonishing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's definitely, it definitely will help. And we also have a de shed package that we do with shampoos, and we spend a lot of time brushing and that sort of thing. If, you know, when usually that's more like when it gets warm again, you know, and they're starting well, to shed she, really she, we've bad. We've had a wonderful groomer, so it's interesting to see that, because yeah. she is just everything that you guys are. Yeah. Nice. Oh, but yeah, it's just that, nice. that in-between is mm -hmm. like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, get a soon groom, it'll, it'll, okay, yeah. Yeah, it'll save helpful. you a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. I have a cane carrier, mm -hmm. and what is the, you know, stripping? Mm -hmm. You never shave them. Correct. Yes. Are they the ones with the double coat? Yes, you should. You shouldn't. Um, a lot of people do just because stripping is a lot more expensive. Time it's time consuming. consuming. Yeah. So a lot of people just opt to shave them because they don't want to pay for it or they don't want to put the work into it. But yeah, they should technically be stripped. Wouldn't that destroy their undercoat? Shaving them? Yeah. Yeah, it does. It but makes the them. It makes them very soft. Now, you did show up, um, what is that, the, the brush? Oh, the undercoat rake? The undercoat. Mm -hmm. Does it take too much out? I, when I strip dogs, I there. do actually mm -hmm. use that. Um, I don't use it, I use it in the beginning to just kind of get some of the bulk out of them, and then I use my hands for the rest. Yep. Three hours later. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> But that will that will take that'll take a bulk of it out and it'll make it a lot easier. And it doesn't take too much. I mean, it doesn't 
I I've never had it take too much. <laughs> well, it's not gonna it's gonna not gonna take like a lot of the living hair. It's mm -hmm. gonna take the dead. More of the dead hair. Dead. Mm -hmm. Okay, so don't and good yeah. for you for, for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I had to buy a grooming table. And two of us were four sessions, and then 45, yeah, wait till you see the size of this door, and we pulled the coat. And it took forever. Because she didn't only really stand like a half hour. Is the number eight the longest guy? So the longest that I have found, it's just, it doesn't have like a number, it's called a two inch comb. Okay. Um, and it leaves two inches. And I think that Oster makes that one. And they make, they actually make a one and a quarter, a one and a half, and a two inch. Okay. So those are really nice for leaving more hair. Cause, yeah, because I've been looking and mm -hmm. they're all like so short. They're all, they're eight eight all very short. short. Yeah. 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 I would say I'm pretty sure it's Oster, uh, O-S-T-E-R. And yeah, they make a set of longer ones. And yeah. if your dog is afraid of the clipper, mm -hmm. would one of the happy hoodies help with that? It might actually. I don't think it would be a bad thing to try just because they probably are afraid of the noise yeah. um, and maybe a little bit of the vibration. Mm -hmm. If they are scared of the vi vibration, I would just start out giving them treats and just touching the clippers to them and just kind of running it along them um, while they're relaxed. <laughs> and just kind of before you try to go in for that actual haircut, just get them used to that feeling of the vibrations. After five and a half years, she's still, you know, years, she's oh, still afraid of it until yeah. I have to do her by hand. <laughs> it's just, just a Yorkie, but it takes, mm -hmm. it takes about three hours. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay. What age should you first bring up puppy in? I would say the earliest we recommend is as long as they've had their first set of boosters, um, not before the first set of boosters, but once they've had at least one set, we, we are fine taking them, and they actually tend to do a lot better at that age because they're not at that fear stage yet. And then they can be introduced to it before the fear stage. A lot of people wait and right in that fear stage and that's the worst time because um, then it just kind of sticks with them. Do you have a recommendation for a tool for a maybe golden doodle for trimming around the for eyes? For trimming around the eyes? Yeah. I would say, um, Clippers are probably, I would just get a pair of scissors. Um, and they make blunt tipped yes. um, grinning shears. That way, since you're working around yeah. the eyes, if they move, you're not going to poke them. Um, and I would say, you know, with those, any grooming website you go to, they'll probably be sufficient if you're just doing around the eyes. You're not going to need, you know, a $100 pair okay. just for around the eyes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, thank you guys for coming. You can take a look at Claire's wonderful stuff. Um, she, we have carry some of her stuff in our store because we've we've had a lot of people ask, and um, she has some great products and offers a great service. And then, if you'd like to do our drawing, then go ahead and put your name in, and uh, we'll pull that before we leave. And yes. Feel free to get some coffee, water, stick around, talk to us, do some shopping for the holidays. We're here for you. Thank you very much, and we'll see you again. Thank you.